not going to be the only one uh, yeah. speaking with. Uh, I just don't understand how you can put a child in a room, especially, I mean, mine who's receiving services and needs the extra help on a one on one basis, mm -hmm. and now you're going to put him in a classroom with these other children who may be more advanced than him. He's going to be, he's lost now. Well, maybe that's the time for him to get services. Right. While right. everybody else is being tested. Right. Maybe that's time to give him more services. But I'm sure I... Yeah, I, but the people who are doing the services are also involved in the they're testing. Gonna, I'm yeah, they're going to say that every testing. teacher is going to be allocated to a testing so again, we're It's very strategic. And so I've worked as a sub. Well, we're right, just is, testing third grade. I've worked yes. as a sub when they have had the systemized testing dates. And they use us as monitors in the library. They put us around the school. So mm -hmm. every single teacher is involved in something. If they're certified, they're involved in the testing. And, and I know I know this is different than No Child Left Behind, but you, it used to be that you have to have a teacher. You couldn't even be an alt certified teacher. You had to have a teacher cert in order to be in the testing area with the students. So as a sub, because I too would sub in the, the school because they needed the additional help, but I wasn't allowed to be with the students that were testing at that time. Even during a long-term sub assignment, it was during... I was in Texas, so it was tax, and while my students were taking tax, I was, they had to send a letter home that I was an, um, a non-qualified person teaching the class. And so then my students, when they took tax, I then went to the library to sub while a teacher who was certified went in the classroom and proctored all the, the students, and then I could come back to the classroom once testing period was over. And I'm sure there's some kind of guidelines similar to that. You guys can kind of look into that a little further, but I'm sure that's accurate or close to. Well, uh, are we testing all the grades at the middle school then, or is it just the... Um, no, it's all. Five and eight for CMTs. <coughs> that will be Monday. And then for SBAC, we're doing fourth grade. And right? six. And six? Four, four, four six. But I got the... Oh, CMTs, on third, this calendar, yeah. CMTs are, all, are listed on Tuesday the 4th. That's, that's the only testing. Then there's nothing again until that's a just practice science, right? test. That's just right, science. just science. Just science. A practice test won't be till the 12th. It's the first, like, training test. Um, I think it's a problem that we don't even clearly know. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think it's all subject to change. And, and I will tell you that every conversation with Mr. Scatta, he has said, Subject to change, subject to change. I, right. This is the issue that has been since I came into this district, and it's not the district, I think it's the state, and I think it's SPAC, and I think it's Common Core, and these are my thoughts, but it's flying the plane while it's being built. It's just not, it, it's not fleshed out. It's not there. That's why they and we're all jumping through hoops that we right. don't know where they are or how they exist. And it's because town by town they had the option. They could have chosen okay. SPAC or... Right. Or right. uh, we yeah. chose yeah. both. The we chose both. We chose both, and that's what. That's where the issue comes up. Is we have at the high school they're testing the 11th graders with SBAC and the 10th graders with CAP. And the issue there is this is the last year they're using CAP, so why are we testing our 10th graders on a test that's never going to be used again? Mm -hmm. It's not going to even fall in line with what they're teaching them next year. So why so are, are they, they being taught the Common Core curriculum, but they're being yes. tested on the old standards? Right. So there's no way that okay. they're going to even come close. Yeah, but okay. just when you say it out loud, it just sounds like science. Think about what that means. Mm -hmm. It's to show that it's not valid. Right. Because but they science can't test really test and test it correctly. According to them, okay. science is not part of the standards yet. So but they're being taught one. to the standards. I know they right. are. But and right. here's, the, here's the other thing that I have. This is my question. You have a junior. This is their most important year in high school. It really is. It's the hardest one out of all of them. They're putting in college applications. They're taking SATs. They're doing, ACTs. If they're, yeah, ACTs. Um, sometimes they're doing subject testing. <coughs> they, if they're in AP classes, they're doing AP testing. So we're pulling them out of classes to take a pilot test instead of being in classes for tests that they're really going to use in their future, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And this, the group that they're testing this year took the CAP testing last year. That is not invalid. So we're gonna give them two tests that are invalid and take all that classroom time away. It just makes no sense to me as a parent to put my child under that much stress <coughs> and anxiety. And we're told by our superintendent that they can compare themselves to other students and we're going to be able to take these results next year when they're seniors and 
correct what went wrong with them. No, we're not. You're not going to get the results back for your child. You're going to get the results back for how the test did. And at this point, if you got to wait to the senior year to try and make up what you didn't teach them the first 11 years, it's a lost cause. So what is the dis what is the data that they're talking about? And again, I came into the district long after this was already decided, so I don't understand a lot of it. But it does say Connecticut State Department of Ed has indicated that districts will receive performance level level data at some point. To what is that referring? And then it goes on to say the specific form and type of data is not yet determined. Whatever the form, test results will be shared with you when the school receives the information. So. Is it at the state level or SBAC? Who doesn't know what the data is going to be? Basically, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. Okay. Um, they don't know when the results are coming back. They don't know how the results are coming back. In all honesty, it took a look at the complete CMTs back this year. I don't know if you had them before, but it took a long time to get CMT results back this year. So, how, and you're testing the test. You're not testing Johnny to see what he knows in third grade so you can correct it in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. You're testing whether or not the test is too hard, too easy, the mechanics of it. Right. So how is that helping little Johnny next year? It's not. The kids are coming home with anxiety, stress, and packet after packet. This is not teaching, this is testing. And you have to know when your kids are out there and they're doing this and they're sitting in front of a computer, they say it's not timed, but yet they're telling us it's only going to take an hour. And the 11th graders are going to spend eight hours on SBAC on average. That's what that chart said. Right. 11th grade, and that's just SBAC. That's not even <coughs> those other tests that you mentioned. Right. So they're, they're, your 11th graders are going to be out of the classroom, I believe, I don't know, David or Jay, maybe you guys know, 10 days. They're going to miss 10 classes. Um. Four? Yeah, because we have, we have hour and a half blocks. We have whole hour right, and because half. you do the hour and a half. Yeah. So they're going to miss four classes of their AP classes to take a pilot test. And then they're going to be required still to take the AP test on the day because that's done across the country on the same day. So how do you make up, plus look all the snow days we've had. How do you make up that lost time? So as parents, you have to know what's best for your child and what works for your family. For my family, it didn't work anymore. And I have to tell you, and this is my story, when Charles' father graduated from here, his grandfather, his uncles, his aunts, his sister, he was going to be the last one to graduate from here. And it was kind of a big deal to him. He was kind of proud of that, that he was going to be the last Dickinson after 65 years to graduate from East Adam. Right? Just before Christmas, he came down to us in tears. He had a horrible year this year. This is a kid who was pulling B's, A's, just an average 15-year-old kid. This year, no matter what he did, couldn't get above a C. And he's like, I'm doing the work. I don't understand why. I don't get it. I don't know what they want from me. Every day it changes. Comes down to us and says, I can't do this anymore. I'm like, what can't you do tonight? Because it was a constant battle. I can't do this. I'm getting dumber by the day. I need to go someplace where they'll teach me and not test me. And I said, well, Charles, if you go someplace else, it's going to be pretty rigorous. You're going to be held to a higher standard. He said, please, hold me to that standard, because right now all I'm doing is coloring. He goes, by the time I get out of here, I'm going to have to be living, your, living in your basement. And I said, well, that's not an option. He goes, if you keep me here, it is. He goes, they teach to the dumbest kid in the class. He goes, and the teachers are frustrated. They don't want to do it. And he said, and they, we spend the whole time, some classes, just listening to the teacher complain. So what level of frustration is that teacher at to do this in front of the kids? Because we know our teachers, and that's not them. So he said, I'm begging you. Take my college money. I need to go someplace else. He goes, I've looked at these three schools. I've arranged to go see them. So I said, Okay, you're 15, I can't get you to clean your room, but you've called three schools and set up appointments. It's pretty serious. So we did. We pulled him after the first of the year. And we found out that this is a kid who was in honor classes and pulling A's and B's, and he's behind. We had to hire a tutor as well. So if, if it can work for you, that's fantastic, but you have to know that you have options. 
And I really want, and I've heard a lot of complaints from parents that it's the teachers against the parents. It's not. Because these teachers have kids too in the system. So you can't fight the teachers. You have to work with them.